Welcome to The Sugar Hobby, where I create art with macarons and sometimes cake. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this Oreo cake with only buttercream, cake, and Oreos. No fondant required. My son requested this for his ninth birthday cake and he absolutely loved it. For this cake, I used one recipe of Sugar Geek Show's Easy Chocolate Cake Recipe and baked it in a 10-inch pan. I also used the fudge buttercream that came with that recipe and switched out three-fourths of the cocoa powder with black cocoa powder to try to mimic the dark color of a regular Oreo. After the cake baked, I cut it in half horizontally and filled it with fudge buttercream, a layer of crushed Oreos, and another layer of fudge buttercream to hold the Oreos in, as well as to add a bit of height to the cake. I added the top half of the cake on top of the filling. Then I crumb coated the whole cake and chilled it for about half an hour. This whole process is the part I didn't get to film. As you can see here, once the cake is chilled, I added a thin layer of the buttercream on top of the cake and tried to make it as level as I could. I also ran the cake scraper around the side of the cake so that the buttercream wasn't sticking out the sides. Try to hold the cake scraper at a 90 degree angle, but you can slightly tilt it towards you as you spin the cake around. When there is a bit of a buttercream buildup on the scraper, just scrape it into a bowl, wipe it down with a tea towel, and continue scraping until you are happy with the results. Personally, it took me quite a few turns before I was happy with mine. Then along the top of the cake, I removed the excess buttercream by aligning the offset spatula with the surface of the cake and slowly scraping into the center of the cake while simultaneously moving the turntable towards the offset spatula. It's also a good idea to scrape and wipe down your offset spatula every once in a while to help achieve a cleaner finish. I don't think this part ended up being really necessary, but I ran a long palette knife around the whole cake so I knew where to pipe the strip of Swiss meringue buttercream I had colored mint, as my son wanted a peppermint Oreo cake. So obviously, if you were replicating a regular Oreo, feel free to leave your buttercream white. I used a large basket weave piping tip and piped two layers of buttercream around the middle of the cake, but you could most likely just cut the tip off your filled piping bag and do the same thing. With your cake scraper, just lightly scrape the buttercream until it's smooth. If you apply too much pressure, your buttercream will spread upward and downward where you will need to pipe the fudge buttercream. It might take a few turns to get your buttercream smooth, but that's okay. I don't think angling the buttercream ended up being that necessary either, but I am sharing this part anyway just in case you want to do it. Once you've angled the buttercream, chill the cake for about half an hour, then round the edges with a clean finger or put a food safe glove on. I personally preferred a clean finger to be honest, and later in the video you will see that that became my default. I chilled the cake again for a bit, then I piped a ring of buttercream around the base of the cake and two rings along the top. I really don't know why I just did one ring down the bottom, but you'll see later on that I rectified that so that in the end there was more symmetry. I went around again with the cake scraper and added more fudge buttercream to gaps. Then I lightly scraped again until the fudge buttercream was pretty smooth. Using the same technique as earlier in the video, remove the excess buttercream along the top with the offset spatula so that we have a smooth surface for the Oreo logo. And now for the fun part. Measure the diameter of the top of your chilled cake and print a reverse image of the Oreo logo with the diameter the same as your cake. Lay down a piece of parchment paper and glue it down with a bit of buttercream. I recommend choosing a round piping tip as close to the thickness of the logo lines for this one. I liked starting from the center and working my way out to the edge, but it's up to you how you want to do this. The usual way to apply a buttercream transfer to a cake is by chilling the piped image first before transferring, but because of all these thin, small details, I highly recommend transferring the image when it's freshly piped. This will give it more of a chance to stick to the surface of your chilled cake. Straight after piping the image, carefully lift it and flip it over. Slowly lower it onto the cake. 
With a really, really light pressure, gently slide a scraper along the parchment paper to help the transfer to stick to the cake. Don't remove the parchment paper straight away, you need to chill it first. After chilling, you can start to remove the parchment paper slowly, gently pressing down where the details aren't sticking to the cake. Just keep doing this until you have successfully removed the paper. You can skip this part if your logo was flush with the edge, but mine wasn't, so I just piped extra buttercream all around. After chilling the cake again, just round the edges with your clean finger like this. Here is where I added that second ring of fudge buttercream around the base and blended it together with my finger. I chilled the cake again, then with a warmed palette knife, I pressed at an angle around the base of the whole cake. It'll make more sense in a minute why. Using the same piping tip as for the buttercream transfer, pipe little dots all around the base to replicate the ridges on an Oreo cookie. And of course, after chilling the cake again, go around with a clean finger and smooth out the joints like this.